Bene sound mixer can be incredibly expensive. Often the sound mixer will bring more gear to set than any other department. But I've got four tips for you on how you can start out as a sound mixer on a budget. You're watching Sound 101 and let's get started. Tip number one, fight for the right to boom. I don't care if you're booming with a $600 fancy boom pole or if you've just duct taped your boom mic to a painter's pole. If you don't get proper placement, it's not gonna sound good no matter what. You should fight for the right to get your boom as close as possible every single shot to be right outside of the frame or just hovering above the actor's forehead. The best part is fighting for your right to boom is free. Often I will see photos from no budget film productions and the boom is like four to five feet above everyone's head. I mean, it's just not gonna sound good. You've got to talk into the mic. If you are a director or a producer watching this video, stop it with the notion that two cameras is gonna make your production go faster and thus cheaper. You're gonna end up paying for ADR in post. And if you've ever seen a movie with low budget ADR, you are one of the few because typically those movies don't go anywhere. If you can get a clean boom track in production, your movie's going to sound better from the get go. It's only the way we've been making movies for a hundred years. Excuse me, Mark. Tip number two, work within the range of your budget wireless. Often budget wireless kits are underpowered and some only go like 20 feet. Now don't think that you can act like the big budget sound mixer who sets up in another room with his wireless receivers. Big guys will actually set up remote antennas and then get the signal down the cable to themselves. Cable is cheap, remote antenna gets good results and they're able to set up in another room. Now budget wireless systems aren't gonna let you do that, but what I've seen people do very successfully is clip their cheap receivers to a cardboard box, place it just outside a frame line on set, and then run the XLR cables back to themselves in another room so they can listen in a nice quiet environment. Audio cables are cheap compared to expensive wireless, and you're gonna actually get a much better result if you actually get the receivers closer to the transmitters. Tip number three, learn the solder. Learning the solder is a skill that will last you a lifetime. Making custom cables for a project, repairing your own cables can save you a lot of money. There's a lot of profit markup on audio cables and you can avoid all that by teaching yourself this amazing skill. You never know when an XLR cable is gonna break, a lavalier wire might snap, or if an antenna is gonna have a short in it. But if you know how to solder, you know how to repair all three of these. There have been countless times where I've had to solder and repair stuff on set, and I ended up saving the day a few times. Because of that, I was also the first person to get called back and rehired. That's a pretty good skill to learn. Tip number four, budget your purchases wiser. So often I see in Facebook groups, people will ask about, should I buy this or should I buy that? But often you'll notice that people will present them with accessories and other utilities they actually need to make the item work. And that often ends up blowing up the original poster's budget. Before you make your next gear purchase, you should ask yourself some questions. How will I be using the piece of equipment? Is there any other way that I will need to use this piece of equipment? What else do I need to purchase to make this piece of gear work to its full potential, like powering it, plugging into it, or does it need media cards? Do I need to purchase bags or accessories to protect it? Often when you ask yourself these questions, you sometimes figure out that what you were gonna purchase isn't what you actually should purchase. If an item that you want is just gonna end up sitting on your shelf because you're not able to afford all the things you need to make it work, that wasn't actually a good purchase at all. If you bought something that actually is gonna work from day one, then that's actually what you should be buying. Fix your spending habits by asking yourself some basic questions and you can actually buy gear that you're actually going to use. And there you have it. Four tips that will result in you being able to capture better audio for less money. Fight for your boom, live within your wireless, make stuff yourself, and don't overextend your budget. These proven tips have been around for 100 years and we shouldn't deviate from them. So, thank you for watching this episode of Sound 101. If you like our video, subscribe, and don't forget to hit the notification bell so you get reminders when we actually post new videos. And if there's something that you want us to talk about in our upcoming videos, tell us in the comment section below, best comment is gonna win a Deity Shotgun microphone. I hear those are pretty good. I'm Andrew from Deity Microphones. Thank you for watching.